right, hey guys, She Detector here. So today's video is going to be an unboxing of a new machine that I'm going to be testing out. Now this machine is number five from the list of machines that I let you guys pick on what you wanted to see first. Um, that list was many, many videos ago, but this is the fifth one on the list and this is the last one on the list. So the machine is the Detector Pro. Now I have to give many, many thanks to Ronnie over at the Gold Digger Metal Detectors because he sent me this machine to test out for y'all. So, so let's just jump right into it. Now I will say before the video begins that this video isn't going to have any actual detecting in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spend this first video doing essentially a test bed, um, showing the machine and letting you guys hear what it sounds like just here in the yard before I take it out to the actual beach because this machine's a little bit different from the majority of the machines. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and I will show you guys this new machine. All right guys, so here's the new machine that I got from Ronnie over at the Gold Digger Metal Detectors. So first before I start, I want to say thank you Ronnie for giving me the chance to try out this machine. Um, I've seen it before and I thought it was very interesting because of where the control box is on the machine. Now for those of you that don't know anything about the Detector Pro, the control box is on the headphones and I will show you what I mean. So now this is a used mas machine so in case some of y'all are out there saying, you know, that's not how it's packed up, it looks like someone's been in it, it is a floor model machine. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take out the coil and the headphones first. Here obviously is the shaft and we've got the book down here. But let me go ahead and show you guys the most important part, which is going to be the coil and the headphones. So, coil, obviously, <laughs> and this, is the headphones for the Detector Pro. So now this is one of the ears and I mean it's not very big really but everything is right here. So you've got your volume and your discrimination and that's pretty much it. It's a very very simple machine. Um, so yeah and, and you know when I first saw this I was like that's crazy those headphones have to be extremely heavy to have all the components of essentially the metal detector box in the headphones but they're not i mean i wouldn't say they're any heavier than i i mean just a standard set of headphones that comes with you know your excalibur or any machine for that matter actually so yeah so here it is now obviously it's not put together i don't have the batteries or anything in there yet but um, this is it, so you would turn it on. This is your on, I don't know if you can hear that click. And then your discrimination. I will most likely hunt with it in zero discrimination, um, at least for the first hunt, so I'll be digging everything. And um, what I'll do is, I, now I don't know, I've not read the book yet, so I don't know if there are different sounds for different metals, I'm not sure, I will find that out though, but this particular video, I'm not going to be doing any metal detecting first. I'm actually going to be doing like a test bed outside with the machine. And I'm going, I have a microphone that I'm going to put right here in the headphone between the headphone and my ears. So you guys can actually hear the sounds that it's making. So that's pretty much what today's video is going to be. It's going to be fairly short, but um, I wanted to do that first before going out for an actual hunt because I'm sure there are several of you guys out there who don't know, you know, either what this sounds like or have never used it or anything like that. So I thought it would be pretty cool to do that first. So yeah, now this is a small coil. I believe this is an eight inch coil. So, you know, you're gonna be able to get into some tight areas instead of hunting with a gigantic coil, but it could affect the depth. So yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this machine together and then we'll go, go ahead and head outside and um, do some practice swings over a couple of different coins, some different metals, and just kind of see what everything sounds like. So let me go ahead and put this together and we will get going. All right guys, so I'm outside, the detector's all put together and I've got a couple of 
items here that I'm going to use for my little test bed. So um, I've got a quarter, a dime, a nickel, and I've got two pennies. One of them is not really corroded and the other one is very corroded. And then I've also got a 14 karat gold ring, this one, and a 925 silver ring. So I'm going to lay all of these out here on the ground and we're going to see if the machine has a couple of different tones or if it's just one solid tone regardless of what I'm digging. Now, I don't have any garbage like bottle caps or anything like that out here just because if the machine has the same tone with all of these coins and rings then it's going to have the same tone period. So I'm going to go ahead and lay these out and we'll go ahead and start swinging the coil over them and see what they sound like. Alright guys, so I've got all of my targets laid out here. Now I did check to make sure there wasn't anything else on the ground before I put the targets down. So we're good there. Alright, so the first target we've got here is the very crusty penny that's right there. And then the next target we have right here is the quarter. And then over here is just the regular penny. And then right here we've got, oh sorry, the nickel. This one over here is the nickel, and this one's the quarter. <laughs> and then we've got the dime right here. And then right here, we've got the gold ring. And then over here is the silver ring. So we're going to start with the very crusty penny right here and see what it sounds like. So I'm going to go ahead and put this microphone into my headphones so you guys can hear all the sounds that the detector is making. So let me go ahead and do that and then we'll get to doing some testing. Okay, so all the sounds are exactly the same. Regardless of what the target is, everything's the same. So currently the discrimination is set to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and increase it a little bit and see if it starts to discriminate out the nickel or the gold and potentially even this crusty penny. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase it. So we're on zero, we've got one, two, three, and I'm counting because let me show you the headphones as I showed you before whoop, they here we go all right the headphones they do have the knobs here but it's a click knob so I don't know if you can really see it it there's like a notch in there that it'll click into so when you're wearing the headphones you can like if you're at discrimination five just drop it back down and count the clicks that you go up. So one, two, three, we'll go ahead and try three clicks up. And obviously my volume's on 10. We're gonna try three clicks up, so discrimination three, and see what that starts doing for our targets. Now, I don't know if you could tell in the camera, but when I was swinging over the coins, I was raising the coil up off of the ground as I was swinging to try and get an idea of the distance or the depth that I'll be able to get. And it looked right about maybe seven, six, between six and eight inches is about the depth that this was getting here in, you know, the grassy dirt area. So, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and check out discrimination three and see what it starts to discriminate out from our little test bed here.
right, so at discrimination three, we were still able to pick up all the targets. And I was noticing some, uh, I guess, depth lost, especially on the gold ring. That one, I, I would say passed five inches and I wasn't hearing it. And that was at discrimination three. So let's go ahead and crank it up some more. We're gonna go to six, so four, five, six. We're at discrimination six now, so let's go ahead and re-swing over all the targets and see see if we lost anything. Ooh. Wow. All right, guys. So we lost some big time depth on discrimination six. Um, the crusty penny here, we lost a good amount of depth on that. That was down to about two inches. Um, the nickel, oh man, the nickel, same thing, about two, one to two inches. Um, the penny was fine. The penny, we're still getting Mm, probably about five inches depth. Same thing with the dime and the quarter. The gold ring, we're down to about one. One inch, pretty consistently, we're at one inch. And the silver ring was fine. That one still had a decent amount of depth. But the crusty penny, the nickel, and the gold ring all we're down to about one, maybe two inches is what we were getting on discrimination six. So I definitely do not recommend going up to discrimination six if you're looking for gold. <laughs> maybe if you're going out there specifically for silver or coins that are in fantastic shape that aren't nickels, then yeah, go ahead and crank it up to six. But if you're wanting that gold, do not go to six. Um, now, of course, this could change when we're out on the beach. I don't know yet, um, but I wanted to do this test before going out to the beach just because, I mean, I don't know anything about this machine, so yeah. All right, so I think that's a pretty good um, gauge on what we'll be dealing with when we take the machine out to the beach. So let's head back in. All right, guys, so what did y'all think of the test bed that I did with the Detector Pro? Um, I had no idea what it would sound like, so, you know, hearing that everything sounds exactly the same, um, I don't know if I was surprised or expected it. I, I didn't really go into it with any kind of specific expectations, um, but the fact that it has a single tone for everything, regardless of what it is, um, it's kind of similar to a bunch of the PI machines that I've used. Now, if you've never used a PI machine, it's a pulse induction machine, and I've used two of them, and both of them had the same tone regardless of what you were digging. So this machine, this is the Detector Bro, Pro, and this is actually the Treasure Hunter Pirate. Um, this machine is very similar to those PI machines in, in that it sounds exactly the same regardless of the target. So you can use that as kind of a good gauge on if you might be interested in this machine. I know there are a lot of hunters out there who like the different tones. They like, you know, the X-Cow has many, many tones. Um, even the AT Pro, the MX Sport, a lot of them have different tones for the different metals. This one, not so much. <laughs> so pretty much the only thing you can do is adjust the discrimination. Now from the little test that I did out there, I had mentioned that going up to discrimination six is probably not the best thing to do if you're hoping to find gold because this at six gives you a depth of maybe, maybe two inches. And I feel like that's really pushing it. It was pretty consistent at one inch at discrimination six. So you're going to lose a lot of gold, especially small gold, if you have it 
that high. Um, now, granted, I didn't have any bottle caps out there today. I didn't have any aluminum, foil, anything like that. So I don't know where exactly that will be discriminated out at. But once we take it out to the beach and we actually get in an actual hunt, I will start playing with the discrimination and see where we end up. So I'm going to try to discriminate out. I mean, obviously the iron won't be an issue. That would probably be out maybe one or two. I'm not positive, but I don't imagine we would have to go very high to get out the iron. Um, if we keep it at zero, you're going to be essentially hunting in all metal mode. So you're going to dig everything, good or bad. Um, yeah, so, so far it's a nice machine. Again, this is very easy out of the box. There's not a lot of adjustments or settings that you need to play with to start going and detecting, which is really good for a lot of beginners. Um, I know sometimes machines out there can have a whole lot of bells and whistles, and yes, that's nice if you already kind of have an idea of the machine or detecting in general, and you kind of know what those settings will adjust. If you're brand new and you've never held a machine in your life before, I would, just off of this little test that I did, I would very much recommend the Detector Pro because it's very easy. Um, let me show you guys the battery area here. Now this takes two 9 volt batteries. So obviously here's the headphones. This is the side with the components on it. This is the side that you actually put the batteries in. So on the bottom of the headphone there's this little notch that you can put a coin in to pop it open and your batteries sit inside this compartment in the headphone. Now that does, I mean, it does add a little bit of weight to it, but I don't think it's terrible. And honestly, I think it kind of balances out because you have the components on this side and your batteries on this side, so it kind of balances out. Now, I don't think it's necessarily heavy to begin with. It's maybe a pound total. I would be very surprised if it was two pounds, but um, yeah, I don't. Now, there is not a lot of cushion between this inside part and this cushion part, it's not a very big difference. This cushion is maybe only about a half inch thick. So I don't know if you can really see when I'm pushing on here, it does collapse down a good bit. So you don't have a lot of cushion on there. So if you have sensitive ears or if your ears start hurting after a while with the regular headphones, this might hurt your ears. I'm not positive. So keep that in mind. Um, but other than this, this is your machine right here. So this is it. It's very, very light. Um, yeah, I mean, so that's definitely good if you have shoulder issues, back problems, things like that. Again, the coil is a very small coil. This is maybe an eight inch coil. I'm pretty positive it's eight inches. Now this coil, when I was putting it together, it's actually kind of strange. So let me see if I keep hitting my cabinet. So now the bottom of the coil is textured and the top of it is not. It's very flat. And I don't know if you guys can really see that in the camera, but when I was putting this together, it looks like it's upside down because usually the textured part of the coil is on the top that you're looking down on and the flat part is on the bottom. And that's usually the part that you want to keep, keep protected with a uh, coil cover. So. When you first get this out of the box and you're reading the directions on how to put it together, because um, I did, because I was looking at it and I was thinking, this looks like it's upside down. So I definitely looked at the manual, but no, it's on there right. It's just, it's smooth on the top and rough on the bottom. So yeah. Okay, so again, I've got all the targets that I tested out here earlier and nothing is, you know, super fantastic. I, like I said, I just grabbed a couple of things to see if it sounded different for each thing, and it doesn't. Um, but I imagine you'll probably still get a good amount of depth on other items, because all of these items here at zero discrimination, I was getting, I would say, between six and eight inches of depth. Granted, this was like an air test. I was out on the grass, yes, but they weren't buried. So an air test, I was getting between six and eight inches so far. I imagine it'll be probably the same for the other stuff, aluminum, bottle caps, pull tabs, things like that. But um, it didn't have an issue finding the gold. I would say the gold was maybe a little bit more shallow than say the quarter. 
Um, but even so, the gold was still being picked up, I would say, between six and eight inches. So, yeah, so I'm excited to see it perform out at the actual beach. I think it'll be all right. Again, I'm going to be starting in zero discrimination, so I will be digging everything. But that'll give us a good idea to see what kind of depth this machine can have. Now, because it does have the smaller coil, I imagine that's probably why we're only getting to about eight inches. Um, I've never used any of the gigantic coils out there, like the nail coils. But a lot of people have said, and I've read in the forums, that the larger the coil, the more depth you can get because it's a larger surface and it's, it's able to go deeper. Because this is smaller, we might not get as much depth as, you know, say a 10 or 12 inch coil. But we'll see. We'll play around with it and see, you know, what we end up coming up with. So, yeah, again, I want to say big thanks to Ronnie over at the Gold Digger Metal Detectors for sending me the machine and let me try it out. I hope you liked today's video. It was pretty short, but again, I had a reason for it. There is a method to the madness. So if you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below. And make sure to check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. And other than that, I will see you guys later.